Okay, can everybody see me all right? I think so, inshallah. Yep, I can see you. Awesome. Yeah, I can see you. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm going to give the adhan. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Shadow and lie, la hail Allah. Shadow and a Mohammed and Rasulullah. Shadow and a Mohammed and Rasulullah. Hey, Allah. Hey, Allah, Salah. Hey, Allah, Falah. Hey, Allah, Falah. Allah, walk for Allah, walk for. La ilaha illallah. In alhamdulillah, nimaduhu, wa nastainuhu, wa nastaghfirullah, wa naudu bila min shuri an fusina wa min sayiti amalina mai. Yadilihu Falam Mudilaha Wam Mayudil Fala Hadia La. All praise to Allah. We seek His aid and His assistance, and we ask His forgiveness, and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our souls and from the evil of our actions. Whoever, whoever Allah guides, no one will be able to mislead Him, and whomever He leads astray, nobody can guide Him. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa adu la sharika la wa ashhadu anna Muhammad amduhu wa rasulullah I testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah alone and without a partner and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his slave and his messenger Ya ayyuhu Latina Amanu Itaku Allahu Haka Tukatiha Wala Tamutuna Ila Wantum Muslimuna. O you who believe, fear Allah by doing all that He has ordered and by abstaining from all that He has forbidden, as He should be feared. Obey Him and be thankful to Him, and remember Him always. Allahumma ini a'udhu bika min al-arba min ilmin la yanfa wa min kalbin la yaksha wa min nafsin the tasba wa min dua in la yusma. O Allah, I seek refuge with you from these four, the knowledge that does not benefit from a heart that does not get humbled to Allah, from a soul which is never satisfied, and from a supplication which does not get answered. Okay, so today's khutbah, since it is the first day of Ramadan, alhamdulillah, 
um, I wanted to go over what it is that invalidates your fast. Um, I know we also are have a lot of people who are unable to fast and I will go over um, as well what you can do in place of fasting um, and how you can um, increase your ibadat during Ramadan um, and keep with the spirit of Ramadan, inshallah. So, for those people who are fasting, there are several things that are obligatory to refrain from when you are doing a, a prescribed fast. One of the main things that is obligatory for you to refrain from is eating and drinking deliberately. So this does not mean that you forget that you are fasting and you inadvertently take a bite of something or you take a drink of something and then you go, Astaghfirullah, I'm fasting and you stop. No. Alhamdulillah, if you accidentally eat or drink something and you realize that you have done so and that you should be fasting and you do not then take another bite or another drink, that is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is giving you this nourishment that you need. And you will not be breaking your fast if you do so accidentally. But after the first one, when you realize that you have made a mistake and that you are supposed to be fasting, if you deliberately go and you eat after that, that invalidates your fast. You cannot fast for the rest of the day. You should make niyah at the end of the night and um, before Fajr to fast the next day. Um, and you are, halas, you're, you're not fasting anymore for the rest of that day that you have broken your fast. Another thing that breaks the fast is sexual intercourse. So whenever the Prophet wasallam talked to the Sahaba about fasting. Someone came up to him and they said, Oh Rasulullah, when we are fasting, we should refrain from sexual intercourse with our wives. But what happens at nighttime? Should, do we have to refrain from sexual intercourse with our wives the entire month of Ramadan? Um, even at night. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised this person and he said no. During the day, you should refrain from sexual intercourse. Just like during the day, you should refrain from eating. But alhamdulillah, during night, you're able to go into your wives with no difficulty. And it will not break your fast and it will not be any... Um, it will not be anything against your reward. You will not gain any bad deeds for doing so. So again, with any of these things that break your fast, if you break your fast, you cannot fast for the rest of the day. Your fast is completely invalidated and you need to make up that fast. Another thing following sexual intercourse um, that invalidates the fasting is seminal emission. Now, for most of the people that um, are here in our little virtual masajid, masjid, um, this is not an issue. Um, but for those people who are able to have a seminal orgasm, it invalidates your fast. Specifically, it is imperative that you make up your fast if you have done it purposefully. The consensus is that it invalidates the prescribed fast only if it's done deliberately. So if you wake up, if you take a nap after, after a jama'ah today, for instance, and you take a nap and you wake up and you have discharged seminal fluid, that is not caused deliberately and it does not break your fast. Wallahu alam. 
Another thing that, inshallah, no one here will have an issue with, but we may. Another thing that invalidates the fasting is vomiting deliberately. Now, if you become sick from fasting and you have to throw up, then that is understandable, you know? Um, so if you're doing it and you're not, you're, you're doing it because you're ill, inshallah, it does not break your fast. It's involuntary. But if you go purposefully to go and throw up because you feel nauseous, but you aren't yet at the point of throwing up or, you know, God forbid you have a disorder where you force yourself to throw up, that invalidates your fasting. And on that one, I want to say also, if you have an eating disorder, such as bulimia, which is one which makes you go so you can throw up. You are exempt from fasting and it becomes haram for you to fast. If you have an eating disorder, you are exempt from fasting and it becomes haram for you to fast. So please do not fast if you have an eating disorder. You will get reward in not fasting. Wallahu alam. Some scholars, specifically the Hanbali Madhab, says that cupping breaks the fast. What is cupping? Cupping is the um, medical act where they place cups on your skin and draw out blood. Okay? This is a um, sunnah medicine, but... It invalidates the fasting in the opinions of Hanbali scholars. Another thing that invalidates the fast is injection. So if you are taking a medicine that must be injected every day, you should try and inject it before you fast. If you have to inject multiple times during the day, then you are exempt from fasting. Wallahualam. If we have anyone here who is Shia, if you are Jafari, it is the opinion of the Jafari scholars that inhaling a dense cloud of suspended dust invalidates the fast. This is because it's like you're taking in some kind of um, food or sustenance or anything um, like that. Just like if you, uh, like in case it's flour, like you are preparing iftar or something like that, um, you, br you breathe it in, that is some sustenance. So it is the opinion of those scholars that it invalidates the fast. However, um, this is not the opinion of Sunni scholars. Um, and so for the majority of scholars, this does not invalidate your fast. But I wanted to mention it for those who may be um, Shia in our mashri. We are like um, most of the way done through this list. And then I'm going to go over some happier things. <laughs> The application of coal, coal eyeliner, yeah? If you apply it, in the opinion of, Mali, of Miliki scholars, if you apply it during the day and then you taste the coal, so because it's in your like eye and that's connected to your sinuses, which gets connected to your tongue, if you apply it and you are able to taste the coal when you apply, it invalidates your fast. If you have the intention to discontinue your prescribed fast, it breaks your fast. I feel like that is something that's kind of obvious, inshallah, but 
if you say, you know, um, I'm going to break my fast, but then you, uh, then you're going, then that, that invalidates your fast. Um, if you are, let me, let me rephrase, let me clarify. In the opinion of Jafari Shia or the Hanbali Madhab, if you, if you intend to break your fast, but then you don't, that breaks your fast. For other Madhahib, if you intend to break your fast, but then you do not break your fast, you're fine. Um, but if you are um, Jafari Shia or you are Hanbali, it is the opinion of the scholars of these Madhahib that this breaks your fast. So, it is better to not have intention to break your fast, inshallah, um, then you don't run the risk. Another one for our Shia brothers and sisters and siblings is the submerging of the head or body underwater. According to Jafari um, scholars, fully submerging the head underwater, whether it's alone or with the rest of the body, invalidates the fast. We have two more. Again, this one is for those who are Jafari Shia. The Jafari ob observe that a person who deliberately remains in a state of impurity following sexual emission, that breaks their fast. So if you have sex with your partner before you, um, before Suhor, okay? But you do not go and make Guswil and you remain in a state of impurity because you did not make husul, um, and it becomes dawn. That invalidates your fast. You cannot fast that day. That is the opinion of the Jafari scholars. Other schools state that the person's fast remains valid Finally, according to Javari scholars, if you deliberately ascribe something falsely to Allah or his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that invalidates your fast. So if you go and you say, like we discussed last night when we were um, reading the first juice of the Quran, and it says, if you write something down of your own hand and you say, this is from God. Then according to Jafari scholars, this invalidates your fast. Aside from it being something that is haram in general, according to Jafari Shia scholars, this invalidates your fast. Wallahu alam. So, we have a lot of people in this masjid who are unable to fast for various reasons, be it health, um, be it, you know, I mean, mostly, it's mostly health reasons. Yeah, mostly health or um, mental health reasons that people cannot fast. All right. Though we do have some people who are unable to fast due to um, fa familial concerns. So what can you do when you cannot fast? You know, people come to me and they say, uh, Sheikha, what, you know, is it permissible for me to, um, you know, eat 
but only eat a little bit. Is it permissible for me to not eat but drink water? Is it permissible for me to take one part of fasting while also not doing a different part of fasting? The answer is no. Like I said earlier, if you are exempt from fasting, then it becomes haram for you to fast. Okay? The reason behind this is mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of his wisdom is very, very merciful and just. Alhamdulillah. And he knows our intentions. So, if we have a health issue, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want us to worsen our health issue by fasting. He does not want us to go and try to fast and only be able to fast half of the day. Because if you fast half of the day, that fast is invalid. It doesn't count. Okay? So it is better for you to not fast. And it is better for you to maintain the sustenance that you need in order to be healthy than it is to put yourself in harm's way. So what then can we do? What can we do otherwise? Yeah. There are many things that we can do otherwise and what the main thing we can do is we can increase our ibadah. During Ramadan, everyone should be striving to increase their ibadah. Um, but especially we should be trying to do that if we are unable to fast, um, because that will give you the extra reward. Um, plus you also get reward inshallah for not fasting. So, um, I'm going to take a minute. Uh, if we can all, um, Take a moment um, to ask forgiveness from Allah and um, for make repentance and dua. Akulu kali had the was tag for Allah. I say these words of mine and I ask Allah for forgiveness. Okay? So, um, everyone, please just take a moment. Make dua, make ikstafar. Um, and then I will continue the khutbah and we will commence with um, Jama. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu wa rasulullah. My thanks and gratitude belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of mankind. And I ask Allah to bless and bestow peace upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, if we know that there are people who cannot fast, and we know that it is haram for people to fast when they are exempt. 
What does that mean for Ramadan? So it means that the spirit of Ramadan is in bettering ourselves. Essentially, it's in spiritual fasting. So what should we do? If we cannot fast, which means that we should not, which means that we must eat, we must drink water during the day, what should we do otherwise? If it is haram for us to fast, it is no longer haram for us to do any of the things that break the fast during the day. But that does not mean that we should go and just do whatever we want during the day um, because it is haram for us to fast. No. Stuff for Allah, we should not be doing that. That does not mean that we should go and um, have sex with our partner if they are also able, unable to fast. Um, you know, it does not mean that we should watch shows that are inappropriate during the day. To, during Ramadan, we are supposed to be fasting spiritually as well as physically. Which is why there are so many things that invalidate the fast um, and that become mokru or disliked during fasting. One of those things is arguing. Whenever it is during Ramadan when you are, or when you are fasting, when someone tries to argue with you, the Prophet wasallam said that instead of arguing, we should say, I am fasting. I am fasting. Why is this? Because anger, to a certain extent, can cause, in the opinions of some scholars, can cause the breaking of your fast. And not just that, but anger can cause behavior that is just not becoming of us as Muslims and goes against what it means for the word Islam. The word Islam comes from the word Salam, which means peace. Okay, so during the month of Ramadan, we should be striving to be Muslims, not only in name, but in spirit. We should strive to hold that peace within ourselves and uphold that peace for others, inshallah. So, things that we can do when it comes to ibadat. One of the things that we can do to help ourselves and increase our ibadat during this time and increase our taqwa is we refrain from arguing and um, crude speech. Okay? So try not to argue. Try not to use curse words. Try not to watch shows that have inappropriate imagery or excessive cussing in it. Even if you cannot fast, try and avoid these shows at the very least during the day. Instead of using your time to watch these shows, use this time and do something for your dean. Try reading Quran during the day. If you have a book on the history of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, read Sirah. Learn about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and learn to love him in your heart, inshallah. We can also do charity. It's harder right now because we are unable to go out and do things because we're in quarantine. But charity first also starts at home. Being kind to people in your household is charity. A smile is considered charity according to Sunnah. So, be kind, do things for other people that you are able to do. If you're able, it is safe for you to go out. If you have neighbors who are elderly and they need groceries and it is safe for you to go to the grocery store, do that for them. 
If it is safer for you to go to the grocery store than it is for them to go to the grocery store because of the current situation that is going on, that is an act of charity. Inshallah, you will get reward for this. Okay? So, stay away from things which are inappropriate. Increase your charity and your ibadah. Read more and learn more about Islam. Another thing that you can do at home instead of watching TV, if you want to watch, if you want to watch something, okay, and you say, I really want to watch something, I need a break, I've been reading Quran or trying to read Quran in Arabic and it's giving me a headache, okay, you need to watch something, fine. What you can do is you can go to YouTube. Alhamdulillah, we have these resources. Go to YouTube and watch lectures. Um, you know, I know that for some people, Sheikh Yasser Qari is a little problematic. But Alhamdulillah, his lectures on the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are amazing. And they are beautiful. And as someone who is horrible at history, I can tell you, I have learned more about the history of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from these lectures than I ever could in a history class. I retain, retain more from these lectures than anything else. Alhamdulillah. We don't have to take the, the things that, you know, are maybe objectionable that he teaches, but his seerah, the way he does seerah is amazing. Allahumma barikulham. Okay? If you have family, and maybe they... Stuff for Allah, but maybe they are not supportive of you being Muslim. Do what you can during this month of blessings to show them what it is to be Muslim, what it is to be a good Muslim. Invite them. If you are fasting, or even if you're not, say, I would like to make an iftar for everyone. I'm not fasting, but generally, you know, in, in times when we are able to go to the masjid, masjid, we'll hold iftar for the community, and I would like to cook dinner for everyone in this house because this is my community. Alhamdulillah, that's charity. Do that. Read Quran and ask if people would like to listen. Play the recitation of Quran. You know, a lot of people try to stay away from music, especially during Ramadan. But you can listen to the recitation of Quran and Alhamdulillah, Quran the recitation of Quran is so beautiful. SubhanAllah, it is so beautiful that it moves the hearts of those who are not Muslim and makes them cry because it is that beautiful, because it is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is done in a beautiful manner. So in this time, if we do these things, if we focus on charity, if we focus on ibadah, if we focus on spiritual fasting and staying away from the bad or the potentially harmful during Ramadan and instead replacing it with good, replacing it with what we know to be good and what we know will benefit us and what we know will give us reward. Inshallah, even if we cannot fast, then we will be making the most of our Ramadan. We will be doing all that we can. Finally, something very important, something that is difficult to be doing this year in Ramadan. But if you cannot fast and you are supposed to make up a fast, that you are supposed to feed a hungry person. Many of us may go out of our way to help the homeless and feed those who do not have access to food otherwise. 
This time of year, this year specifically, it is very difficult because we are being told not to leave our houses. We are being told not to be around other people. So what can you do? You can make donations. If you donate money to a charity that feeds people, inshallah, this will count. If you donate money to a food bank so they can buy food to give to people who come in and need food, this will count. If you donate money to a homeless shelter so they can feed people, inshallah, this will count. If you have a local charity that works with homeless people, for instance, where I am, we have um, uh, the Basil Mall. Okay, I work very closely with the sister who runs it. And you don't, you know, we donate food to her, and then she takes the food to homeless shelters so that way they can feed the homeless because we can no longer go out and feed people on the streets due to safety issues. Okay? So if you are unable to fast, you should be trying to feed other people. And in particular in this time when there's so little to go around, when so many people do not have jobs and are in need, if you are able to give money to places who can feed the homeless, alhamdulillah, this will be best for you. Okay. Rabana Atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa kina adaban nar. Our Lord, grant us the good of this world and the hereafter and protect us from the torment of the fire. I mean. Rabana wala tuhamina wala takata danabihi fa wafa wafu ana wa gafil lana my apologies warhana anta malana fansuna alal qami khafirin our lord do not place a burden on us like the one you placed on those before us our lord do not burden us with what we cannot bear pardon us forgive us and have mercy on us you are our only guardian, so grant us victory over the disbelieving people. Amin. Rabbana la tuzih kulubana bada'id hadintana wa hab lana miladunka rahma inaka antal wa hab. Our Lord. Do not let our hearts deviate after you have guided us. Grant us your mercy. You are indeed the giver of all bounties. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Inaka hamidun majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ni Muhammad. Kama barakata Allah Ibrahim wa la Ali Ibrahim inaka Hamadun Majid. O Allah, let your peace come upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, as you have brought peace to Ibrahim and his family. Truly, you are praiseworthy and glorious. Allah bless Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, as you have blessed Ibrahim and his family. Truly, you are praiseworthy and glorious. Allahumma amin ya Rabb. Thank you guys so much. Um, I apologize when I stumble through certain things. I'm very nervous since this is my first khutbah. Um, I established the salat and, and I will uh, give the ikama since uh, Ustad Arza is not here to give it. <laughs> 